invent a different future. They imagined a rich 3D experience fusing gaming, music, movies, communication. They imagined a platform that could power such a transformation. PlayStation hit the world with a force rarely seen. You go, girl. Developers embraced the platform with amazing ferocity, creating the world's richest, most immersive games. PlayStation 2 redefined computer entertainment with unparalleled power, speed, and graphics, converging movies, games, and music. PlayStation Portable, the next revolution. Suddenly, handhelds aren't just for kids or just for games. From a minor market into a major cultural force, PlayStation continues to invent the future. Live in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kaz Hirai. Good afternoon and welcome to the annual Sony Computer Entertainment E3 press conference. It's great to be with you here today at a new location, the Sony Picture Studios. First of all, are you guys all excited about E3? All right, come on, there are more than 2,000 people in this room. Let's try that again. Are you guys excited about E3? Yeah. All right, all right, that's what I'd like to hear. 
It's very good because all of us at Sony Computer Entertainment have been waiting a long time to get to this point, and we're very excited to share with you our industry, our partners, our loyal fans, what's in store for the future of the PlayStation business. We have always attempted to do things differently at Sony, and our goal and vision for PlayStation has taken us to unprecedented levels of success and inspiration. For the last decade, we have strived to push for constant innovation by continuing to deliver home console platforms that challenge the status quo. Just keeping up with conventional technology isn't enough for us. That runs contrary to the Sony DNA. The original PlayStation offered a true 3D arcade gaming experience in the home for the very first time. Five years later, with PlayStation 2, we delivered a quantum leap in technology, allowing for the most realistic gaming experience on the market. And this is still true today. PlayStation 2 is the first complete entertainment hub with its ability to play games, audio CDs, and DVD video content through one box. And on top of that, we delivered an industry first, backwards compatibility with the original PlayStation library. To date, we have shipped more than 190 million units of PlayStation hardware and close to 2 billion units of software, which, in my mind, is a pretty amazing accomplishment. Then along came PlayStation Portable, a product we introduced to the world at last year's E3 show. For us, any product carrying the PlayStation name has a lot to live up to. And yet again, we delivered on the promise. PlayStation Portable is full of innovation, far superior to anything on the market today. Just as PlayStation in 1995 revolutionized gaming and the way our industry does business, PlayStation Portable served as the disruptor in the portable space and changed the way consumers view entertainment on the go. And now, we're on the onset of a new decade for the PlayStation family of products, what we're calling the digital decade. So let's take a look at what that will look like. And now, here to outline some of our future. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to one of our company's founders, who is known in some circles as the father of the PlayStation, Ken Kutaragi. Hi, everyone. Thank you for sharing your valuable time with us today. Every time when I have a dream, I can emerge of a next voyage. I can feel a breeze. And today, we are so excited to review our third PlayStation portable and home entertainment system. So. <laughs> PlayStation 3. In 1994, we launched our first PlayStation capable of rendering real-time computer graphics. Technologies used in the original PlayStation might have been too advanced at that time for consumer products, but we challenged to integrate all of core technologies into a small box. Six years after we released our first PlayStation, we tried to create the most powerful 128-bit microprocessor for computer entertainment applications called 
emotion engine. It opened up a new paradigm in computer entertainment. And now, we have developed the world's most powerful cell processor, which is going to be applied in our next generation system. History of PlayStation was also a history to seek for the latest optical disk media for content distribution system. We employed CD-ROM media for our first system, which became a trigger to success. For PS2, our decision was to adopt DVD, which clearly popularized DVD movie format. In this sense, it would be a great chance to support Blu-ray disc for our next generation system. For storing the state-of-the-art program with vast rich data, capacity is the key for delivering media. Blu-ray has six times bigger capacity than current DVD. We would like to accelerate this transition. As of today, PlayStations have achieved a cumulative 190 million install base in homes around the world. It is a privilege that both PlayStation and PlayStation 2 have become the absolute number one platform in the world. Within the last 10 years, over 13,000 titles were released for the PlayStation and PlayStation 2 format by a number of publishers worldwide. These are very important asset for everyone. We are happy to announce that PlayStation 3 will have backward compatibility to enjoy these assets. In February at ISSCC, we announced our latest cell processor together with IBM and Toshiba. The chip consists multi cores for real time applications. This is a die photograph of the cell processor utilizing 90 nanometer SOI semiconductor technology. It contains 234 million transistors that boost supercomputer-like performance. Our team member, Jim Kell from IBM, had sent us a video message, so let's take a look at it. The Cell Project has been the most important project in my career. It will have a lasting impact on the technology community and will start a new generation of products that will positively benefit the end users. The development of Cell is for uses beyond games. Its supercomputer attributes will revolutionize computer technology for a new interactive world. As we gathered specialists from IBM, Toshiba, and Sony, we shared the same vision and dreams. The whole team is very excited about the project goals. Even though at times it seemed like an impossible journey, the incredible power of this world-class team overcame the largest challenges to meet the goals. Even IBM who helped pioneer computer and processor designs throughout history, feels lucky to have participated in this revolutionary project. This appreciation has been felt by the design team, architects, and engineers who all contributed to this great project. We are very excited and are looking forward to see all the new entertainment this chip will help create. Well, this chart shows 32-bit floating point calculation speed by Emotion Engine at 300 megahertz, as well as Xbox 360 processor at 3.2 gigahertz, and the cell processor running at the same frequency of 3.2 gigahertz. Because of its massive multi-core architecture, cell is more than 35 times, 35 times faster than the Emotion Engine, and twice the speed of the Xbox 360 processor. This chart shows memory boundaries between main processor and main memory system. 
With RAMBAS XDR memory technology, PS3 has eight times faster memory bandwidth than PS2, and three times faster compared to the latest PC. Here is a chart that shows the latest supercomputer top five. Current top supercomputer has 36 teraflops double precision floating point calculation speed for massive computing applications. One of the typical applications for these kinds of supercomputer is movie rendering for special effects. Sony Imageworks, which is a Sony Pictures Entertainment Group company, has piled a huge number of cluster servers for movie rendering through known real-time operations. A total number of floating point calculation speed has reached 10 teraflops. We are going to utilize such supercomputer-like performance in the real-time computer entertainment arena. These photographs are generated and synthesized by cell processor based system. With RSX graphics processor, PlayStation 3 will have a most almost total of two teraflops single precision 14 point calculating performance within the system. With that level of supercomputer like calculation power, we can walk through or even log in seamlessly to both real world and computer generated cyber world. These are the basic specifications of PlayStation 3. Cell will be running at 3.2 gigahertz for computer entertainment applications. Each cell has eight SPEs, but for PS3, seven SPEs will be activated. Each SP has dedicated 256 kilobyte local memories. Power PC based core processor has 512 kilobyte L2 cache. RSX is a joint effort with NVIDIA, which has both latest PC and PlayStation capabilities. RSX is the world's most advanced GPU that can synthesize movie quality graphics. It takes full advantage of the power and bandwidth of cell. One of the significant advantages of RSX is its dual screen outputs for 32 by 9 super wide aspect graphics or mainland serve view application for gameplay. Each of the two screens has up to 2K by 1K resolution in 1080 progressive scan. For supporting a supercomputer like horsepower, memory bandwidth and its size are crucial factors. PS3 has a state of the art memory system. XDR has applied the fastest bandwidth to the cell computing system and dedicated 256 megabyte VRAM system will enrich graphics expressions. As a mass storage system, PS3 will have a detachable two and a half inch HDD slot. Bus bandwidth is another benchmark for real-time applications. PS3 has very powerful bus channels for each operation. With its overwhelming power, PS3 will be capable of handling both digital consumer electronics and computer applications. For these possibilities, PS3 will have powerful interfaces, including six USB ports, memory stick and SD card slots, and a compact flash slot. 
For digital audio video outputs, PS3 will have two HDMI outputs. So together with PlayStation compatible AV mouse output and optical digital audio output. Another interface for communication. To meet higher bandwidth for the next generation, PS3 will have a built-in gigabit Ethernet port with two port switching hub. Wi-Fi is also a standard feature of PlayStation 3 for communicating with PSP and other devices. For quick response, PS3 will support built-in Bluetooth for up to seven wireless controllers. Inheriting the PlayStation G, PS3 will support a wide range of optical disc formats, including CD and DVD, together with SACD playability. And the next new media is Blu-ray disc, which contains up to 50 gigabytes on a disc. We are strongly supporting Blu-ray format for PS3 as a standard feature and expected to, expect to play the same role as we did with DVD. Finally, in addition to games, PS3 will, of course, be able to perform non-gaming functions, such as digital music, movies, and photographs, even during gameplay. Video communication over the network or internet browsing can also be enjoyed simultaneously while playing games. PS3 truly is a system to be placed in the center of the living room in homes around the world. Future is almost here with PlayStation 3. Thank you. The world we live in is full of information. Here we have a world just like reality. Look at it more closely. There is no concept of distance in this world. We can move instantaneously. We can see anything live. And when live images are linked to three-dimensional data, information can be directly drawn from reality. It's like the world of a movie. Take a look at another live image, a common scene captured by a camera. When the camera images are fused with additional digital information, reality can be controlled, giving you an incredible power and freedom. And now let's look at the world of sports. Golf is one of the world's favorite sports. Precise simulation combines the real and the imaginary. Once linked to digital information, you can play on any golf course around the world. Reality becomes data. If reality and information are connected, you can experience your own reality and control it your own way. It's a new way to view information, imagination, and dreams come true. So please join me in welcoming the co-founder of NVIDIA, Jason Wong. And thank you. Thank you, Ken. <clears throat> I'm delighted to be here. And I'm delighted to join you to announce clearly the most important digital consumer device to be built this decade and one that you've so passionately worked on over the last five years. You know, our two teams share a passion for computer graphics. NVIDIA is home to a very large number of the world's most talented graphics design engineers. Over the course of the last 12 years, we've dedicated well over a billion dollars in R&D to advance this technology, created over a thousand patented technologies, 
including one of the most important contributions we've made to the computer industry, the programmable shading processor. Today you can find NVIDIA's GPUs, standard in the highest performance computers and the most graphics demanding workstations around the world. So you could imagine how excited we were when Ken invited us to partner with him to build the PlayStation 3 GPU. Ken had three very lofty goals. First, to build absolutely the most advanced GPU the world has ever seen. Second, to truly make it possible to synthesize movie quality graphics in real time. And third, to understand and completely utilize the awesome processing power and throughput of the cell processor. Now these are daunting goals. The fundamental challenge of graphics, of computer graphics, is that tension between beauty and speed. The x-axis represents the speed of graphics rendering. The y-axis represents the beauty or the image reality of the rendered image. Movies are clearly beautiful and fantastic to look at, but they take hours and hours to render on farms of CPUs. Game consoles, on the other hand, are lightning fast, 60 frames per second, knee-jerk reaction, but clearly doesn't come anywhere close to the image quality that you see in movies. Computer graphics technology used for movies is called shaders, programs that run on farms and farms of servers. It takes hours and hours to render each pixel and each frame. The technology of computer consoles, game consoles, is called texture mapping, fast but limited. Our goal with the PlayStation 3 graphics is to overcome this fundamental barrier and bring movie quality images to game consoles at 60 frames per second. Our solution is the RSX, Reality Synthesizer. There are so many new technologies that are introduced in the RSX, and it will take years to describe. It is the culmination of over 1,500 man years of engineering. There are four, however, that are extremely important in the next generation of game consoles. First, the heart and soul of the RSX, the programmable shading processors. The RSX can process 136 shader operations simultaneously in one clock. Second, 128 bits floating point pixel precision. This is something that's just truly spectacular. Today's game consoles are limited to 32 bits of pixel precision, which means that we can only express 250 shades of lights for each color. And I will illustrate to you later that that's simply limiting and will not achieve the level of quality we want to see in movie-like images. The third, 2K by 1K resolution. Resolution is the enemy of graphics. The higher the resolution, the more pixel processing capability you need, and the more system memory and graphics rendering memory you need. 2K by 1K, 2 million pixels. The highest resolution of HD supported on this game console. And lastly, most importantly, is the overall system architecture to achieve this incredible throughput. Now let me put this all into perspective. The RSX is based on our next generation graphics architecture that has never been seen before and that we will preview for the first time to the world today. There are 300 million transistors on one chip, half a billion vias. These are little tiny one micron electronic devices that connect each layer of metal. 
And if you connect it back to back, all of the interconnect on this chip, it will reach half a mile. 300 million transistors, eight layers of metal, built on Sony's 90 nanometer process. Now, another way to think about this is how much performance is there. The RSX has twice the performance of the G4 6800 Ultras, the highest performance GPU in the world today. Each one of these GPUs retail for $500. There will be two of them equivalent horsepower in the RSX. Now, what is 300 million transistors? Transistors are a bit of an obscure little, little electronic devices. 300 million transistors is equivalent to, essentially, the Xbox GPU, the PS2 graphics synthesizer, the GameCube flipper chip, the Gecko microprocessor, the Xbox Pentium 3 GPU, uh, CPU, the PlayStation 2 Emotion Engine, and you kick in the highest performance PC CPU in the world today, all of that combined is 300 million transistors. Now the question is, what do you do with 300 million transistors, and why is it that the RSX requires so many? Well, fundamentally, the fixed function texture mapping capabilities are too limiting, and programmable shading processors requires an extraordinary amount of computational horsepower. Instead of just a pre-computed decal that is layered on top of a 3D object, in those kind of a texture mapping architecture, it is not possible for us to articulate the subtle material surfaces that are only visible pixel at a time as you interact with the environment, the lighting and the shadows of the environment around you. It's simply impossible to articulate brushed aluminum, carbon fiber, felt, carpeting, wool, silk, and even be able to show the difference between gold paint and gold. We want to achieve that level of realism. In order to do that, we incorporated a farm of programmable shading processors so that each and every single pixel will be computed in real time. In, a, in, ex, in addition to texture maps, we will now provide also light maps, shadow maps, bump maps, normal maps, and even some really exciting new things like surface reflectance functions, surface and subsurface scatter functions, to be able to articulate the really subtle effects that you see in real life. Let me show you now and demonstrate for the first time our next generation GPU and give you a sense of what pixel shaders can do. This is Luna. She is a computer generated person. And notice all of the subtleties, the specular shine on her lips, the soft shadows under her nose and above her lips. Notice that the specular highlight on her cheeks shows the imperfections of her skin. Notice that light is penetrating her skin and scattering underneath her skin so that you see her rosy cheeks. The volumetric shadows on her hair. Her hair looks so incredibly soft. All of these effects are made possible with programmable shaders. However, we want to do a lot more than that what the PlayStation 3 is about is creating beautiful worlds that come alive. In addition, the programmable shaders are articulating her skin, the skeletal structure, and her mus muscles underneath in order to express the subtle emotions. The plasma beam is now circling around her, and her bodysuit is now coming to life, reflecting, refracting, and absorbing light in different ways. These lovable creatures are also rendered with shaders. Notice the plasma so bright in the back that it actually penetrates the membranes of their, of their skin. 
and rendering for the first time effects that have never been seen before, volumetric rendering of objects. You can see the skeleton in the back through the objects. The lights are so bright that they're flooding over the silhouette of the characters. This is a simple technology demonstration of what is the possibility of the PlayStation 3. Thank you. Luna is beautiful enough to fall in love with. Now the second most important, in addition to the ability to be able to articulate the surface material, we also need to have a color format and color precision that can express the incredible subtleties that we're going to be able to render. Today's computer systems are limited to 32 bits. I want to show you some imagery that is courtesy of Paul De Debevic at uh, University of Southern California and one of the leading experts in a technology called high dynamic range. 32 bits can only articulate 250 tones of light. And yet our eyes, and certainly my eyes right now, I can see 50,000 to one contrast. So in the brightest of lights and the darkest of shadows, our eyes still have the ability to see deep and subtle details. In order to be able to articulate this level of realism, we need to take our color format to floating point. With the RSX, we're introducing 128 bits with floating point precision for each and every single pixel. Let me show you the effect of that. On the upper uh, side is the original image, um, both of which currently look the same. On the top, we're going to show you 32 bits accuracy. And on the bottom, we're going to show you 128 bits of high dynamic range pixel precision. As we make the lights brighter, notice that the top is starting to wash out. And it's simply because it doesn't have enough precision to deal with the brightness of light. The, the details through the window are already essentially lost. If we make it even brighter, notice that it's completely washed out. The benefit of 128 bits of pixel precision is clear. However, the amount of electronics and the amount of horsepower necessary to do so and deliver that capability in real time is staggering. RSX will bring that to the game console world. Resolution. This is the digital era. Digital displays are getting higher and higher in resolution. PlayStation 1 was introduced during the time of NTSC and TVs, 320 by 240 resolution. The PlayStation 2 was the first entry into digital, digital displays and has a resolution of 720 by 486. The PlayStation 3 is going to bring two megapixels to real time. Now, two megapixels, that is the resolution of movies. It is the resolution you're currently seeing broadcasted uh, to you right now. Having this level of resolution on your TV screen at home is going to be absolutely spectacular. When you combine that with Blu-ray and digital panels that are going to be coming out in the future, uh, the living room will never be the same. And lastly, and most importantly, is the overall system performance. Putting it together, the first thing you notice is the bandwidth of the bus between the cell processor and the RSX, 35 gigabytes per second. That's seven DVDs in one second. Seven DVDs will be transferred across that bus in one second. It is seven times the bandwidth of the highest performance PC today. The second is 100, and bil 100 billion shader op operations per second. The ability to process shaders is going to be the critical measure of performance and beauty in the coming generation of game consoles. 100 billion is three times that of the highest PC today. 51 billion dot products per second. A dot product is the fundamental and one of the most important calculations in 3D graphics. The highest performance Pentium 4 can perform 3 billion dot products per second. 51 versus 3. Two teraflops. Over 120 times the performance of a Pentium 4. And of course, 
512 megabytes of graphics render memory. One of the most interesting and most exciting architectural advantages that we're bringing to this generation is that the RSX can render pixels to anywhere in system memory. So instead of being limited to just the four megabytes of the PlayStation 2, the PlayStation 3 will have 512 megabytes available to it for graphics memory. So how do you put all this stuff together? Well, we're going to show you the first demonstration, real-time demonstration of a next generation game console and a next generation game. To help me do that is uh, Tim Sweeney, founder and chief technical officer of Epic Games, and Josh, his capable sidekick. Tim? Thank you very much, Jensen. Josh, thank, thank you. you. Now here we're showing Unreal Engine 3 up and running in real time on the PlayStation 3 hardware right now. We're not going to say anything so you guys can enjoy this demonstration. Wow, there is no way that is real time. Tim, there, there is just absolutely no way that's real time. You're going to have to prove it to the audience. OK, now we'll run through the same demo um, and take over uh, control so Josh can actually navigate through the environment and see what we have here. And here we have a 720p uh, high definition screen uh, being rendered with per pixel lighting and per pixel shadowing. With shaders, that are more than 200 times more complex than was possible in the previous generation. Wow. So here we see a floating point render target uh, with very high dynamic range lighting everywhere, um, per pixel lighting and shadowing, and all of the effects that you're, you've seen in previous generation movies are now being done in real time games now today with this generation. And the high dynamic range is what makes it possible for us to see the incredibly bright highlights while still seeing the, the details in the shadows. Oh, exactly. It's the real difference between what's been seen in video games before, where you had 8-bit graphics, uh, versus what you see in film, which is very, very high definition. Now tell us, Tim, how long has it taken you guys to, to develop this game for on top of the uh, PS3 dev kit? Well, amazingly, we got the first PlayStation 3 hardware only two months ago. So what you see here is just two months of work bringing Unreal Engine 3 up and running. And this was so fast because we have a lot of experience with PC development and 
all of that knowledge was immediately applicable to PlayStation 3, which has a very nice development pipeline, OpenGL based, you know, CG shading language based, and all standard based, and very easy to, to write for. Mm -hmm. That's terrific. This is really awesome stuff. Thank you, Josh. Thank, Thank you, you, Tim. <laughs> well, there you have it. That's the RSX. You know, what you're seeing today is really just the tip of the iceberg of what's going to be possible in this truly revolutionary game console, PlayStation 3. It has just been an incredible privilege for us to work with Ken and his team on building clearly the most important digital consumer platform of this decade. I hope you guys all enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Masa Shatani. Thank you and good afternoon. I'm very, very pleased to be here. This is a very exciting moment for all of our people who, who has been developed the PlayStation 3 development. This is the first, uh, this is PlayStation 3 schematic shown here for the first time. PlayStation 3 has a system design of elegant simplicity combined with outstanding performance, a total of two gigaflops of the single floating point calculations. The heart of PlayStation Sleep is a cell processor, a revolutionary architecture for the high performance computing. The cell is designed, to, designed specifically to handle the massive floating point computation demands of the most complex algorithms, physics, dynamics, AI, simulation, and the media processing will be the signature element of the PlayStation 3 titles. In addition to Ken Kutalagi's presentation earlier, I would like to share in detail the several very attractive features of PlayStation 3. This amazing innovation will allow the user to experience the multiple channels of entertainment and the information at the same time from multiple sources. If you are fortunate enough to have two HD monitors, then <laughs> you can enjoy a panoramic view which creates a horizontally seamless image of 32 by 9 aspect ratio. An even more attractive use of the dual screen feature will be to show tactical and statistical information to be displayed on the, uh, on, even on the PC monitor while playing the sports game on larger main screen. Likewise, you can video chat with your friends at the same time as playing as a playing game. This is not simply to display of the same game, but allowing the user to command and control multiple source, sources of multiple channels of the entertainment simultaneously. Further, fusing the real and the virtual world together. PlayStation 3 can be controlled by a wide variety of devices, all wireless. The controller that ship with, that will ship with the system uses Bluetooth technologies to guarantee the real-time response. Required for the most intensive video game applications. Bluetooth also is designed with a lower power consumption in mind and will provide more than one day game play time before having to be charged, recharged by any USB port or the PS3 or other device. In addition to USB standard interface for various controllers like uh, iToy, Camera, there is also a built-in wireless network interface that allows connection to Wi-Fi devices, including PlayStation Portable. This allows the PSP to become a remote controller as well as remote screen, whether you're in the next room or on the other side of the world. From any remote location, PSP can access to PS3 to play the load playing game which runs your PS3 at your home. The always-on 
always connected to nature of PS3 means that your secure media can be accessed remotely at any time over broadband or wireless networks. SCE has pioneered the concept of the camera attached to PS2. With, other, with over 2.5 million iToy cameras sold across the world. And now we are pleased to introduce to the next generation of high definition IP camera to PS3. This camera is IP based, allowing the user to play, place the camera anywhere in the world, in home or and anywhere in the, on the planet. Through, through IP based networks, this location free concept allows any PS3 user to instantly launch their own broadcast station anywhere in the world. Think of it as the next, it as the next generation personal homepage. Rather than simple text and the still images, I could provide my own high definition video news and information live or archived from hard disk drive. PS3 HD IP camera will allow the user to travel to another user's camera view. So you can make a virtual visit to the beach in Maui, Hawaii, all just by selecting the HD video and audio channel. In the PS2 era, the network function was additional hardware and the software solution. The PS3 era fundamentally changes this approach. The network is a core element of the PlayStation 3 DNA. Every aspect of the system has been designed with the broadband and the home networks in mind. PS3 is an always on, always connected device. The four C's of the network, commerce, community, content, and communication are built in to every aspect of the system design and operating system allowing applications to easily exploit these features. Media browsing and network interface are built into the operating system and allow the user to handle multiple tasks simultaneously, even while playing a game. Video calls can be made and received, music and streaming media browsed, new content for games purchased and downloaded, naturally, multiplayer online game feature will be also offered. We recently introduced the concept of the game sharing on PSP, where a player can send game data to other PSPs. PS3 will also support P2P connection as one of the key methods of communication under the secure environment. Users can exchange their unique characters and items through the network. By taking advantage of the network, the entertainment world of PlayStation continues to grow. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> now I would like to introduce Phil Harrison. Phil? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Massa. It's a great pleasure to be here. Um, one housekeeping notice. I've just been asked to point out that although we are running a little bit late and behind schedule, we have an amazing surprise at the end of the show. So please do make sure you stick around till the very end. So anyway, why am I here? Well, over the next few minutes, I'd like to take you on an illustrated journey. Um, I'd like to take you through some uh, illustrated, uh, creative, and technical examples of what the machine is capable of. I hope that what follows will give you an idea of the enormous potential uh, that is unlocked by PlayStation 3. But before we begin, I'd like to take you back in time, back to March 1999, and to the worldwide introduction of PlayStation 2 at the Tokyo International Forum. We showed a demo of a duck, a duck that became famous for showing off the capability of PlayStation 2 and the Emotion Engine and Graphics Synthesizer. It was also a lot of fun. Why don't we remind ourselves of what that looked like six years ago? Here we have our duck in his uh, bathtub, rendered in real time on PlayStation 2 with his best friend, the submarine. So uh, 
shall we uh, take a look and see what he looks like now on PlayStation 3 and see how he lives today? Let's have a look at the demo. So here's my duck, stunningly rendered in real time. Um, this is me driving it around. Man in suit uses game controller, shock. And uh, we have um, the, uh, the ability to render the water in great detail. As I jump the duck in and out, you can see the caustics and all the effects that are being rendered in real time on this uh, fantastic HD display. 2,300 square feet, that TV, by the way. Um, available in a Best Buy near you tomorrow. So, um, I do think our duck might be a little lonely, so let's introduce a couple of friends to him. And you can see here these little battleships or galleons uh, uh, that I can move around under my control, which um, I'll do my best to uh, play two players at once, which is challenging, I have to say. And uh, you can see um, that as I uh, move around uh, the camera, um, the, the, uh, the cloth dynamic is being damaged by the cannonballs in real time. And, uh, Everything is uh, working in real physics. But I still think our duck's a little bit lonely, don't you? Let me add a couple more ducks into the simulation. So uh, here you have all the physics working and all the collisions and all the dynamics and all the fluid simulation. But he's still a little bit lonely. I think he still needs more friends. So let's uh, stick in a couple more here. And this gives you an example of the overwhelming performance of PlayStation 3 and everything uh, that uh, you can do. Some of them are so uh, happy to leave the, uh, the, the bath, they, they jump out. But I don't think that's enough ducks. I don't think you can ever have enough ducks. And for the technically minded amongst you, this demo uses LOD, which is lots of ducks. <laughs> ba boom Ah, it did work. <laughs> right, now, you think that's impressive. You think that's amazing. We can do more. And to help illustrate what else we can do to this particular demo, I'm going to ask Dr. Richard Marks to join me on stage, the creator of iToy. Come on, Richard. Come and join me. Come on, uh, move over there, and I'll get this uh, set up for you. So what do we have here today, Rick? So what we've done is we've taken an iToy and plugged it into this demo, this beautiful water demo that shows off this kind of tub. But I've also brought some cups to show you that kind of cups my children might play with in the bathtub. So as you see, I pick up this cup and I pick up this cup. I can, I can reach out now. And what would I want to do with cups? Well, you can imagine, I would like to just dip the cup in and get some of the water right out of the... Isn't this in. incredibly cool? Reach in, get some more water. Get some water and throw it across the room. All of this just using a standard iToy camera, but connected directly into PlayStation 3. Rick, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Thank Round you. of applause for Rick. Great job. Thank you. When we introduced PlayStation 1 to the creative community back in 1993, one of the real-time demos that we showed had a large number of balls bouncing around the screen. There were hundreds of 2D sprites drawn in real time, and back then, it was considered a major advance in computer graphics. Six years ago, when we introduced PlayStation 2 to the world, the balls had graduated into feathers, and we showed a beautiful demo with about 1,000 feathers swirling across the screen. Some of you may remember that demo. Now, the feathers have become leaves. Now, this is a perfect demonstration, not just of graphics, but actually of what Cell brings to computer entertainment, because in the PlayStation 3 generation, it's not just about how objects look, it's about how they behave. In this demonstration, we have a real-time vortex controlling all of the hundreds of thousands of leaves that you can see in real time. Plus, we've got 5.1 surround sound being created in real time. In fact, the cell has so much power that every one of the leaves could have its own audio channel if you wanted to hear them rustle. Another example of the tremendous computational power of PlayStation 3 is shown with this next demonstration. It's appropriate that since we're here at the home of Sony Pictures, home of movie magic and special effects, that we show the PlayStation 3's ability to blow stuff up. 
And uh, what I'd like to do now is to show you a scene from a game that we have in development, which uh, has not yet to be announced, but uh, obviously being a gas station in the middle of the desert and being a digital set, well, surely we should be able to blow it up. So let's blow it up. Now, what this demonstration actually uses is only the cell processor to render volumetrically all of the performance required to simulate an explosion, thermal dynamics, heat, gas, smoke, fire. This is not an animation. This is not something that an artist created. This is all purely physics-based. We can even run it at night. Let's have a look at it uh, with uh, the uh, lights turned down and run it one more time. Here in slow motion, you can see that the heat haze and gases are emitted, emitted by the simulation accurately represented on screen. Phenomenal example of the power of both PlayStation 3 cell and RSX. Let's run it one more time, and then we'll move on to the next demo. It's a fantastic presentation. What PlayStation 3 also allows us to do is to converge many of the creative industries that work in the world together on one platform for the first time. And to help demonstrate this, we turn to our friends at Sony Pictures Imageworks, the Oscar-winning special effects wizards from the movie Spider-Man 2. We asked them to borrow some of their precious computer graphic data that they had created for the movie, and we got the wonderful actor Alfred Molina's performance from Spider-Man 2 in computer graphics. And here, we run it in real time on PlayStation 3. I'm amazed at the response, uh, the, re the reaction here. The, the, uh, um, the quality of the image is absolutely fantastic. You can see as we move the camera around that the light moves around also over the face. And this uses uh, a very special technique which is pioneered by, once again, a guy called Paul Debevic uh, using light stage data. And we can move the light around over the face and you can see that the shadows are cast realistically and even the light reflects and transmits through the ears. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, the cell processor allows us to get that level of detail into our 3D computer graphics. We can also change to different light stages to show in real time um, image-based lighting where we're using the environment to light the character here in a forest glade, uh, lighting the Alfred Molina character in real time. And uh, you can see as we move the high dynamic range in and out, you get a phenomenal level of detail. We also were able to put this into the, the movie performance and use some of the sound from the movie to bring the whole thing together. And let's take a look at that. Something in my head. Something talking. Now, sadly, Alfred Molina couldn't be with us today, but we decided to light him as if he was. And we took a light probe from this room earlier on today. And here, this is what he would have looked like if he had been lit in real time by uh, this lighting in this room. And you can see the light probe data lighting the character. And as we move into the eyes in particular, you can see the fantastic reflections that this gives us. Now, this is going to just give you some idea of the level of intensity and immersion that we're going to get from games on PlayStation 3 and the amount of storytelling ability that we will have working with amazing creators and amazing actors. It's a great demonstration. Next up, we're going to show, yeah. I think that's worth a round of applause. This next demonstration was written by the brilliant engineers at the STI Development Center, the creators of the cell chip. And this demo, which is a real-time demonstration of a landscape being created by two bits of data, one being two-dimensional satellite imagery taken from outer space, and the other being three-dimensional height maps uh, collected from LIDAR, which is basically a laser uh, ranging system flown over with an aircraft. And in real time on the cell, those two bits of data are combined together to create, in software only, this three-dimensional landscape. This does not use the RSX at all. So this gives you an example of the tremendous performance that we get from cell. Even the clouds are generated procedurally using Perlin noise effects. Really stunning. Uh, example of where the immersion in games will go from here on in. 
This next demonstration also uses a landscape, but in a very different style, in a very different setting, but equally impressive creatively and technically. This was created by our colleagues at Sony Online Entertainment and shows a beautifully rendered fantasy world. Um, but what are the, what's the cool thing about this demo is the fact that the world can grow in front of your eyes. And so here you see the grass growing, the flowers growing, organic environments being built real time in front of the player. Um, you can imagine what this could mean to online games, but you could also imagine what this could mean to the ability for the player to influence his own environment and influence his own world while he's playing the game. Here the water beautifully rendered and all the characters, and all, oh, sorry, all the leaves and all the uh, petals growing around you. Really beautiful demonstration of RSX and Cell working together. Now, from a complex and sophisticated landscape to a complex and sophisticated city, in this case, London. London was the setting for Team Soho's epic crime thriller, The Getaway, and for the past three months, a team of six people has been working to show their vision of the future of that franchise on PlayStation 3, and they would like to share it with the world for the first time today. Now, this demonstration uses a lot of the real-world rendering techniques that were, uh, we've seen in earlier demonstrations, and it's not just about graphics. We can see in this demo a tremendous amount of detail in the 3D objects, which are beautifully rendered with amazing lighting and amazing detail. But the real purpose of this demo is to show how a city in a future video game would come to life with the complex simulation of traffic, the complex simulation of the way people move around, the way they make the city live and breathe, and how they have their own lives, hundreds of individual people on the scene at, at any one time. And I think this demo is a great example of what a next generation PlayStation 3 game is actually going to deliver in terms of immersion and richness and detail to the scene. The eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that all the cars have the same license plate number, but this is only a bug you discover when you fly halfway around the world and show it to the world. So um, I apologize for that. But uh, you can see beautiful high dynamic range lighting here um, in the scene. Really um, a good example of, of what we're going to see uh, for the future. Now, the next vision piece that we're going to show shows how multiple forms of entertainment can share the same technical and creative DNA. And what we wanted to do here was to imagine and share with you an example of what happens when you take two billion dollar franchises, one from the video game business and one from the movie industry, and collide them together on PlayStation 3. I think this demo needs no further introduction. Let's take a look. That's amazing, isn't it? Can you imagine what Sam Raimi and Kazunori Yamauchi would create if they got together to form a new project? But I should be at pains to point out that that is not the next game from either PDI or the next movie from Mr. Raimi. So anyway, while we're in the world of movies, let's show an example of the cell's ability to decode high definition streams in real time. Now, as many of you know, the current most powerful PCs on the planet struggle to decode just a single stream of HD. But here on PlayStation 3 Cell, we can decode 12 simultaneously. 
and we can select any one of them to become the main full HD screen. And this is an example of how you could navigate multiple HD streams simultaneously coming off Blu-ray disc or coming off a network. And I think gives you just a taster of what media navigation in the future is going to look like. Now, as Massa was sharing with us earlier on, media navigation is at the heart of PlayStation 3's operating system DNA. And this next demonstration gives you another example of how media can be browsed on formats of the future. Here, the cell is decoding a 1,000 media thumbnails simultaneously. Now, these could be movie data, game data, uh, could be your family photographs. It could actually be your friends on video chat anywhere in the world. It could be the IP camera anywhere in the world. So that's it for the show and tell. And as I think you can see from the demos that we've just seen, PlayStation 3 delivers astounding performance and creative possibilities to the development community. Right now, all around the world, game developers are hard at work making this potential become reality. And here to tell you more about the games that will make PlayStation 3 come alive, I'd like you to welcome back Kaz Hirai. Thank you very much. Thank you, Phil. As you heard from Ken Kutaragi, Masa Tatani, and Phil Harrison, PlayStation 3 is set to deliver the quantum leap the industry expects to help us lead the digital decade. No doubt about it, PlayStation 3 is a powerful machine under the hood. But what about the games? Our development partners have been diligently working with PlayStation 3 architecture for some time in order to deliver the type of gaming experience that consumers will expect from the next generation. And they have prepared some pretty exciting stuff to share with you today. So first, it gives me great pleasure to introduce this company back to our stage again this year. They have been a staunch supporter of the PlayStation format over the years, and, they have, and we are truly inspired by what they, what, what they have produced on the PlayStation 3 so far. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome back Electronic Arts Chairman and CEO, Mr. Larry Probst. Thank you. Thank you, Kaz. The history of the PlayStation has been marked by great games for the consumers and for the incredible opportunities that Sony Computer Entertainment has created for game developers. In 1994, EA signed on as a charter member of the PlayStation 1 team. Then in 1999, we made a huge bet. We passed on some other platform alternatives and dedicated our worldwide studios to supporting the PlayStation 2. When PlayStation 2 launched in 2000, EA was there with six titles, including Madden, NBA Live, and SSX. We like to believe those were some of the games that showed the early fans what the PlayStation 2 could really do. In total, EA has produced about 250 titles and sold more than 220 million units on the two PlayStation consoles combined. But beyond the business, a lot of talented artists have found their calling in this medium created by Sony. And a lot of game lovers have enjoyed countless hours of entertainment. For all that business, all that creativity, all that entertainment, I think we owe the team at Sony a round of applause. Today we're in transition, preparing for the PlayStation 3. At EA, we like to say transition is our friend. It's challenging, but it always results in dramatically better games and bigger markets. How much better will the games be? Rather than telling you, I brought someone who can actually show you. Let me introduce the general manager of EA's Chicago studio, Kudo Tsunoda. And Kudo is also the executive producer of Fight Night. All right, so the game we're going to show you is um, EA Sports Fight Night, which is EA's boxing franchise. And this demo, um, I truly believe, is a big first step forward towards uh, delivering a new, more emotionally immersive game experience on the PS3. 
So I've been working on um, Fight Night since the beginning of the franchise, and I just can't tell you like how exciting it is as a developer to finally have the technology in our hands to build the Fight Night game that we've been looking to build all these years. So well, enough of me yapping, let's fire up the demo. And uh, just to be clear though, this is all running live in real time on RenderWare on the PS3. Mr. Kang of the Ring, combination slanger, skill and technique, old foe mania. I'm deep in the trenches, training for months. I'm like a prize fighter, giving left jab, left hooks, overhand rights, followed by an uppercut, turning out your lights. All right. <laughs> so as you know, in boxing, it's these big, like, bone-crushing, devastating punches that really bring out the drama and the emotion of the sport. Um, obviously, what we're looking to do, you can see graphically now just how we're able to emphasize the brutality of the punches. But what we really want is the person at home, like, playing the game to kind of get that same gut-clenching, stomach-tightening feeling that you would have if you were actually in the ring seeing that punch land. And I think that's like the biggest goal for us on Fight Night PS3. It's all about like, hey, having the player, the person playing the game really feel those same kind of emotions and reactions that a boxer in the ring would feel, and then using those emotions to like tell the story of our fight. So let me show you how we're gonna do that. So the first thing in you know, building an emotionally believable character is making the character look visually real. And that's like really hard in our game because you know, pretty much everybody who plays our game knows what a human being looks like. And so if there's anything off in the character, like the human eye is gonna know. But you can see how far we've come just in being able to kind of uh, deliver a, a realistic human form in game. But it's not enough just to make a nice picture. We really gotta bring that picture to life. And we do that with all the different facial animations we have on our character, animating both the geometry on the boxer's face and the textures of their skin to produce the most realistic looking facial expressions that we've seen in video games. But again, it's not really about, you know, um, hey, having just the best looking boxer, at least that's where it starts. But what we're trying to do is, um, you know, again, bring the heart and soul of the boxer to the forefront over the course of the fight. And that's really hard in a boxing game because there's such a uh, wide range of emotions that a boxer experiences. So, I mean, it goes anywhere from like the real intense kind of fury and anger that you would, uh, a boxer puts behind their most powerful punches um, to that kind of like, hey, when a boxer gets hit, that really, you know, dazed and confused and hurt look that you see on the boxer's face. But once we're able to really get those emotions across to the user, <laughs> um, they now become the new in-game indicators, you know, to tell the player the status of what's going on in the fight. And I think, again, really, that's our big goal um, for Fight Night PS3, is we're getting, hey, uh, the people like in the ring, like you're playing at home, you're able to see, um, hey, all the different kind of things going on in the other boxer's mind, and use that to your advantage to figure out what tactics and strategies that you're gonna use to be successful. And with the PS3, we're now able to take the person out of the living room and put them right in the ring. And you know, hey, that's why I love uh, developing games for PlayStation 3. Larry? Thanks, Kudo. Fight Night 3 looks amazing on the, on the PlayStation 3. At EA, we're making another big bet. We think PlayStation 3 is going to change the world of entertainment, and the EA studios are 100% committed to help make that happen. Kudaragi-san, Kaz, Andrew, and Jack, thank you very much. Thank you, Larry and Kudo, and all the folks at Electronics Arts for being here today. As always, your products continue to push conventional boundaries. Thank you very much. Now, we're pleased to have with us a company known across the globe as the greatest storyteller in the role-playing game category. Their leading franchise, Final Fantasy, has sold more than 60 million copies worldwide. To get a sense of how Square Enix views next-generation development, it is my pleasure to welcome the company's president, Mr. Yoichi Wada.
どうもよろしくお願いします Thank you very much for the introduction, Mr. Hirai. アルケイディア軍のダルマスカ侵攻を妨げるものは何もありません。奴らが国境に達するのは時間の問題です。The Arcadian Empire invades and subjugates its neighboring kingdoms one by one. Dalmasca, the stage on which this tale is set, is one such kingdom. Sabo! <laughs> The images you just witnessed are from Final Fantasy XII, currently planned for North American release in the 2006 fiscal year. You will be pleased to note that Sony has announced that their next generation game console will be fully backward compatible with PlayStation 2 software. Please look forward to all that lies ahead. Now, I'd like to switch the focus of my speech to Square Enix's involvement in PS3 software development. First, let me give you an example of a technical demonstration our dedicated team has put together.
the images you just saw are from Final Fantasy VII. Thanks to the PS3's powerful third processor, our acclaimed classic has never looked better. Please note that we have seen is merely a sample, and we currently have no plans on releasing a remake of Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> However, Square Enix is committed to fully backing Sony's new console. Plans to bring the Final Fantasy series to the PS3 are just beyond the horizon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wada, for joining us today on this very special occasion. You've heard great things and seen promising game content from both Electronic Arts and Square Enix, two of the industry's major players. But let's listen to what some other creators are saying about PlayStation 3. For us at Insomniac, making better games means creating a more immersive experience, an experience that convinces you that you are actually talking to real characters. You're in real worlds, even though they may be sci-fi worlds or fantasy worlds. What we're looking forward to on the PlayStation 3 is being able to take advantage of the cell's raw horsepower to create more sophisticated physics, to uh, control hundreds of characters on screen, each of which is controlled by its own AI system. I think the cell signals the convergence of mainstream entertainment and games that everyone has been talking about for the last 10 years. The PlayStation 3 should give us the ability to do all of these things. I'm very excited at the possibilities that the next generation of PlayStation presents. Thanks to the powerful features of PS3, we can create the kinds of high quality graphics that until now could only be seen in movies and create them in real time. Uh, this is a truly incredible thing. The first title will be a simultaneous game and movie release previously called Oni, which is now officially titled Nio. It's a story that famous Japanese director Akira Kurosawa wanted to film. The other two titles will be large titles and we present all new kinds of entertainment. We will reveal more about these titles soon. We at Koei feel that the next generation of PlayStation will revolutionize video gaming, and we are planning to create games that will surprise and entertain gamers everywhere. PlayStation 3 will make it possible to simulate worlds in real time and simulate interactivity for the consumer as never before. The visuals on PlayStation 3, of course, will be a huge jump and uh, with going to HDTV alone, um, it will be quite amazing what we'll see. But the most exciting feature for us really is the cell technology in there. The CPU is so much more powerful than anything not only seen before, but also what we were expecting for this next generation of consoles. Um, but that really makes things possible on a scale um, which will really, really show people what next generation is all about. まあ、I think what we're most looking forward to uh, creating in a PlayStation 3 game is a truly realized, truly immersive, living, breathing world. This is what we live for. You know, every five or six years, these amazing company like Sony comes along and gives you this wonderful new piece of equipment that allows you to 
start unlocking your visions and unlocking the dreams that you've been having for however long. With Cell and with PlayStation 3, we feel very excited and very confident that we're going to be able to absolutely push the limits of what can be created and the experiences that we can immerse our audience in. We really know that we're going to be able to go to the next level in terms of realistic simulations and realistic immersions combined with incredible narrative, incredible storytelling, and those two components combined are what are going to create the experiences of the future. And uh, just to add to uh, Mr. Kojima's comments, yes, Metal Gear Solid 4 will be coming to PlayStation 3. When we, were when we were in the planning stages for this event, we asked many of our development partners, including several teams within our own internal studios, to submit content to be shown today. We expected to see a few bright lights and a couple of diamonds in the rough, as it is early in the development process. Some of the best, most renowned gaming franchises, like Gran Turismo, Metal Gear Solid, Grand Theft Auto, were all born on PlayStation. And it's hard to imagine how these will evolve with the power of PlayStation 3. Our partners have prepared a glimpse into this future to share with you today. So let's take a look at what fans have to look forward to.
All of this looks fantastic, don't you agree? Yeah. All right, that's what I like to hear. So existing franchises are really the foundation. But to build an amazing platform, we need to reinvigorate, reinvigorate the market with something new and something different. So our next video is a small sampling of new games and future franchises being born on PlayStation 3. So let's take a look at those. You are? Okay. You're ready? Yes, let's go. Where is he? Time is running out. Hurry. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> hey, you too, mister. Hi. Hi. How's it going out there? Target in sight, all according to plan. So boring. Okay, let's switch to our plan. Roger. We'll go in, but keep an eye on us, okay? Why are you here? Electrical 
a lot of new exciting titles to look forward to. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Ken Kutaragi. I hope you've enjoyed this monster machine and outstanding software showcase throughout the presentation. And now, I have the final and the biggest announcement. Everyone, this is PlayStation 3. Well, all of us at Sony Computer Entertainment would like to thank you very much for joining us today on the eve of E3 2005. As you can see, we have a lot of new, exciting things in store for our collective future. But please, don't take my word for it. Please feel free to stop by our booth to experience the world of PlayStation for yourself. Thank you, and enjoy the show. <laughs>